it's Easter time. We in Germany, we uh, celebrated it last weekend and we spoke about, but this time it's up to our friends coming from the southeast of uh, Europe. And uh, they will bring in some traditions and some very nice uh, songs and so on. Uh, for those who are with us the first time, we are a group of people calling, uh, we are calling us Danube Networker. We are trying to bring together people from different Danube countries, but also from the whole Europe, if they like to join, and uh, to look, to, need, to uh, know us each other better, uh, to uh, discover things we don't know about the others, and to have a common, more uh, European awareness. And we are working together since 2008, and we are uh, more and more. And uh, we are not only named Danube Networkers, but also Danube Networkers for Europe. That, mean, that means that we really like to be together with all of you, and also from un other continents, if they are coming in. Today, we have a, no uh, a program as every Sunday. It's not a professional program. It's a program from, from friends to friends. And I'm very, very pleased to see that a lot of you coming from different countries are in. And I'm especially pleased to see two very nice friends coming from Great Britain. And uh, they are working a lot in the University of the Third Age in Great Britain. And uh, this is the first link we do in this big and very interesting country and I hope this will be a start of some more and good cooperation. I would like to start um, the story uh, I will never forget. Today we have uh, Orthodox Easter and when I was young I was living in a quarter in Mannheim where I had been a Russian Orthodox group of uh, Christian and they had a choir and in each time and I participated in this choir and each time in Easter we had been to the church midnight and they made a big fire and then we went in in this dark church and then with all this fire it was so light and it was nice and nice and we sang and we sang and I think it's well known in all your countries, but in German, it's the text is Christ is erstanden von den Toten, bezwang den Tod, schenkt denen, die da leben, ebges Leben. And there are a lot of stoves and every time we repeated Christ is erstanden von den Toten, bezwang den Tod. And now I'm sure that our Bulgarian or Romanian or others uh, can say if they know this melody and can sing it in your language. Christina Marinova, do you know? I have to remark in Bulgaria, uh, it was forbidden to visit church. And especially in this evening, uh, there were policemen who look uh, for us. Uh, we didn't know the song, and we didn't know many things, mm -hmm. uh, many religion things. Okay, so it's very important to know. Thank you, Emily. But I have to say that also this time you are restricted to go out and to go in the churches. We all are restricted, but we are uh, connected by the video conference. But so I will ask to Romania, to Lucia. Lucia. Je vous chanterai une chanson de Pâques. Mm -hmm. Christos enviat. Christus is rising. Christ is rising. Mm -hmm. Christos a înviat din morți, cu moartea pe moarte călcând, și celor din morminte viață dăruindu-le. 
Hristos a înviat din morți, cu moartea pe moarte călcând, și celor din morminte viață dăruindu-le. Hristos a înviat din morți, cu moartea pe moarte călcând, și celor din morminte viață dăruindu-le. Thank you. Oh, thank you. This was... Easter, the Orthodox Church, thank you for giving some impression about. Now we will go over to Uti. It's in Cluj, Napuka. Otilia, yeah, yes. and uh, the group of Cluj, please. Okay, so um, I will introduce uh, Mihaela Markovic because she, yeah, apparently didn't succeed to um, join the meeting. Uh, so she is a psychologist and she works as, as a coordinator of a day center for seniors in Cluj-Napoca. This is in Transylvania, if some of you know this. And uh, it is, this is not a very typical day. It's not like a center for older people. It's like a day center where older people, where uh, seniors go and um, join different activities which are free they are paid by the um, city hall and among these activities they also dance they learn how to dance and they, they uh, perform these dances on local festivities and now i'm going to show you a video of a typical folk dance romanian folk dance from transylvania and also when you will see the video you will see that the persons wear a very nice costume and these costumes were uh, made by the persons them themselves and are um, uh, popular for this Transylvanian region in Romania. So now I will share my, my desktop and I will show you the video. I hope it works. Um, now. <laughs>
Oh. Okay, so I I didn't present the whole video because they, they had a very large one and we don't have enough time here to present it all, but you can see it on the website from us and they will also uh, attend this video to the Codanex project. Uh, and you, you can see afterwards, I mean, like one or two weeks, you can see a lot of their activities on the Codanex uh, project website. So if you're interested, because- Bravo, bravo. Bravo. Yes. I'm specially moved because tomorrow I had a need, I would have, um, have an appointment in Cluj with this group. But because of Corona, I'm unable to go over there by flight. And so they joined us with this uh, video uh, in this meeting. I have to say that this is the beginning of a new partnership. And uh, they make a lot of activities. Mm. And our aim is also to bring together all around Europe groups, as this is, and the various uh, universities of the third age. And uh, then we will see how we can do and uh, how we can act in smaller groups or in uh, sessions like this. Next one will be we are going back to east i don't know just to say this film is a contribution for the competition we do you know those who had been in the first session that actually we make a big uh, project called kodanek connecting people along the danube and uh, in all about europe and we look for personal cultural treasures and persons present in a small description uh, the personal cultural treasure of the ethnic or the national group they would like to make known to neighbors and also the intention why we should know it and when you have a look in our website you will see we have more than 50 presentations in and we hope to have more and this group senior harmony will present as cultural treasure, the dance they danced, but also the costumes because they are all handmade and handmade and very nice. And so we ask you also frankly to reflect what can you present from your cultural treasures? And uh, there is a competition on running uh, until the end of May for also for text and for photo and for video, this is for was for a contribution for the video competition. Have a look to our website and join us. And uh, we will have an exhibition of the best of the contributions in July in, in Ulm. Unfortunately, this year we can't celebrate together the Danube Festival because all festivities um, are forbidden until September or October in Germany. I think it's the same in your country. But nevertheless, we can make the exhibition and we have the video conferences to show it. And we will see us later, not in July, but uh, perhaps in uh, October. So give us a contribution and we would be very grateful. But now we will go back to Easter time. And it's Tanya who is presenting how she is coloring eggs in a very old fashion. Tanya, you are in? Yes. <laughs> ah, very fine. So let us know. Let us. I tell you now how man in Bulgaria eyes uh, färbt with naturfarben. Uh, with natural colors, you will show us how to do. How to color eggs by natural colors, herbs, and so on. Yeah? Als Kind habe ich das immer noch mit meiner Großmutter gemacht und das hat mich immer sehr gefreut und ich habe aufmerksam aufgepasst. Ähm, als erste und wichtigste Farbe ist ja rot und das hat man immer mit Zwiebelschalen gemacht. Mm -hmm. She learned it to do by her mother, uh, her grandmother. It's an old tradition in her family. And uh, the first color is red. And the red was produced by onion. 
Da kocht man erstmal ein Sud aus Zwiebeln und da kann man die Eier drin färben und das e So first the Sud. What is Sud? Otilia, can you help me? So you boil the water yes. and you uh, take yes. one in and then uh, it gives some color. Yes, Sud is like you have a lot of onions and not so much water. So it's very really concentrated. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dann äh, sammle ich schöne Blätter und drücke ich sie am Ei und umwickle das mit einem Feinstrumpf. So sieht es aus. Das ist dann schon vorbereitet. Das ist collecting plants, you see, and then it's by uh, Nylonstrumpf. Nylonstrumpf. Ja, yeah. how to say in English? Who can help? Nylonstrumpf. <laughs> Nylon. <laughs> So, so it's yeah. popping or something. How? This uh, comes then in coffee. It's in coffee. It's 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 coffee. Und es sieht dann so aus. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, it looks nice. Uh -huh. Mittlerweile mache ich auch mit Kurkuma für Gelb. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Mache ich auch mit, äh, mit der Netz von der Zitrone oder Zwiebel. Natürlich auch wieder kochen. Sieben, acht Minuten. Dann hole ich es raus. Und dann schneide das Netz ab. Und es sieht dann so aus. Aha. Oh, very nice. <lacht> und das habe ich mit Brennesseln gekocht und auch mit Strumpf gemacht. Es ist aber ein bisschen nicht so ganz grün geworden. Mhm. Und dann noch sehr künstlerisch, da schneide ich vom Blätter die Hasen ab. Und binde ich auch mit rein. Oder so wie hier mit Lamm und Küken. Aha. Das habe ich immer früher mit meinen kleinen Kindern gemacht. Und jetzt mache ich halt alleine und ich hoffe, dass die Tradition weitergeführt wird später. Sie und meine Tochter. With uh, the children and she hopes she will have grandchildren and so that she can continue this tradition, this family tradition. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Yeah, bitte schön. For joining us. How do you do it? With very simple things. Some plans. We can do it all. Huh? And it's very nice. Bravo, bravo. Prima, danke. Thank you. And we have another person. She is coming from Ruse, it's Sefta. And she will uh, speak about the meaning of the different colors of the eggs. Okay, I will share my screen now to show you the presentation. Um, it's a bit long. I hope you'll have the patience to listen to it. I'll try to speak slowly so that everybody can follow and understand. So I'll say something in the meantime. I chose this topic. Okay, I chose this topic because colors are very important in our life. They affect us in many ways. They can affect our mood, our health, and anything, you, you name it. So, uh, we usually dye or color or paint eggs uh, at Christmas, uh, but do we know the meanings of the colors and their messages? We paint them in different colors. Uh, of course, the most important color is red, followed by yellow, and then green, purple, black, believe it or not. And uh, now let's see what these colors mean. Can I have the next screen, please? Okay, so red is the most important one. It is usually the first egg that is uh, painted red. And uh, the association is with the blood of Christ. But the color itself, as you can see, symbolizes love and hope. I want to say something more about the color red. Um, 
for those people now i will add a medical uh, aspect to it because now we suffer from corona so perhaps this will be interesting to you uh, people who suffer from anemia uh, it is a blood of the disease when uh, there is a deficiency of iron uh, if you want to recover quickly you have to wear red clothes eat red foods red meat everything which is red and you will recover very quickly so that's why the color uh, red is associated with blood in a medical sense also okay the next one please medizinischem sinn rot macht gesund sagt sie okay the second most important color in easter egg dying is yellow it symbolizes light and happiness but most importantly it symbolizes the sun and uh, the sun is above everybody it brings us uh, warmth and sunshine and uh, another interesting uh, fact that i want to tell you is that it is a very special color in the past not everybody was allowed to wear yellow for example in china in the chinese uh, empire only the chinese emperor was allowed or, or could wear yellow nobody else could do that and yellow is also known as the color of freedom this is how i see it. Mm -hmm. can i have the next slide please das gelb als, als zeichen des lichts und glücklich sein und in china war früher das tragen gelber kleidung nur äh, praktisch dem kaiser erlaubt das hat sich allerdings dann geändert okay orange orange is the symbol of endurance and strength Ausdauer und Stärke. Okay, I'll now say something <laughs> and I apologize in advance, but I am a well-read person and I read uh, and I am very much interested in colors. So I once read that you shouldn't use orange colors in your bedroom because it will affect the performance of your husband in a negative way. So don't use orange in the bedroom. Aha, also äh, Sefta sagt, sie beschäftigt sich viel mit Farben und sie sagt, diese Farbe, diese orangene Farbe, soll man nicht im Schlafzimmer haben, weil es irgendwie einen schlechten Einfluss auf den Ehepartner hätte. Warum, weiß ich allerdings nicht. Sex. <lacht> okay, the next one is uh, blue. You can see blue eggs. They represent health. Yeah, blue, blue is the opposite of red and red can make you uh, excited and agitated but blue will calm you down and here is another medical uh, fact if you have high blood pressure go into a blue room and it will go down also your heart rate will be reduced and it explains why in some hospitals in europe the walls of the hospitals are painted in blue It helps the people to relax. Mm -hmm. Also Sefta sagt, blau steht für Gesundheit und sie sagt, während rot aufregend ist, beruhigt blau und deswegen, wenn man äh, Bluthochdruck hat, sollte man in ein Zimmer gehen, wo sehr viel blau ist. Das würde eine beruhigende Wirkung haben. And the next color is an interesting one. It is purple and it represents truth and hope. Now, if you are observant and if you, if you have watched movies uh, where there, there are judges, you will see that they usually wear a purple robe. The message is, in a way, we are looking for the truth. Mm -hmm. Geht also für Vertrauen und Hoffnung, diese purpurne Farbe. Green. Everybody knows that green symbolizes growth. It is the color of grass, and if you look at your garden tools, they are all painted green. Mm -hmm. Das ist Wachstum. Grün steht für Wachstum. Okay, black. I'm not sure whether you have seen a, a black Easter egg, but uh, it is rare, but still surprisingly, uh, its meaning in Easter is not uh, that of death, sorrow and grief it represents eternity also in der osterzeit bedeutet ein schwarzes ei nicht 
ähm, Unglück oder Tod, sondern Ewigkeit. Yes. But it is very rare to see black eggs. And this is the brown egg. Uh, it symbolizes happiness. The meaning is that it is the color of Mother Earth and it uh, provides stability. Mm -hmm. Also die Farbe braun ist die Farbe der Mutter Erde und sie verkörpert Stabilität und ist das Symbol für glücklich sein, sagt Sefta. Okay, the next one. Now, now um, here are some interesting facts. Uh, according to legend, the first Easter egg was painted by Mary Magdalene. She to, gave it to the Roman Emperor Tiberius and informed him that Jesus uh, had resurrected. And she painted this egg red. This is why now uh, we always paint the first egg red. Because of this tradition. Okay, the next. Uh, in German, the die Legende sagt, that Maria Magdalena das erste Ei bemalt hätte und dem Kaiser Tiberius gegeben hätte und uh, ja, wie so Legenden halt sind. So. Okay, I had, I found some more interesting facts and I I myself didn't know that the number of painted eggs must be odd. Uh, And uh, nowadays people don't pay so many eggs, but in the past, depending on whether the family was poor or rich, they would paint, uh, if the family was poor, they would paint anything between 20 and 40 eggs. But if the family was rich, they would paint uh, between 200 and 400 eggs. Can you imagine how much work it took to paint 400 eggs? Uh, and the last fact, uh, I think it uh, refers to our country. In the past, only the oldest woman in the family was allowed to paint eggs. And uh, she, uh, another detail is that she would do it in secret, behind closed doors. Nobody was allowed to watch her while she was painting the eggs. Mm -hmm. But later <laughs> this uh, custom was uh, uh, abandoned and all the women in the family could take part in this activity. Mm -hmm. Nochmal kurz, also früher war es zumindest so, dass die Zahl der bemalten Eier abhängig war von der Zahl äh, der gelegten Hühnereier und von daher haben ärmere Menschen natürlich äh, weniger bemalte Eier gehabt als reiche. Und es war auch eine Tradition in Bulgarien, dass das erste Ei, das bemalt wurde, von der ältesten Frau in der Familie bemalt wurde und dass das niemand sehen durfte, dass sie das ganz in einem Geheim, in einem Raum gemacht hat. Und äh, dann allmählich wurden alle Frauen in dieses Ritual mit einbezogen und äh, weitere Eier bemalt. Aber dieser Brauch, den gibt es heute nicht mehr. And the last one, I think. Okay, in the past, we no longer do this because uh, it's impossible but eggs were taken to the church uh, to be blessed by the priest and then taken back home. And on Sunday morning, after people greet each other with the Christos was crece, Christ has risen, then uh, the egg fight begins. Mm -hmm. Also wie in allen orthodoxen Kirchen werden die gekochten und bemalten Eier mit in den Gottesdienst gebracht und dort gesegnet und man bringt sie dann mit nach Hause und dann beginnt auch dieser traditionelle Eierkampf, den Emily und Valerie letzte Woche gezeigt haben, wo man zwei Eier gegeneinander stößt und derjenige, dessen Ei nicht beschädigt wird, wird ein gutes Jahr vor sich haben. Okay, that's it from me. Happy Easter again. Thank you, Zepta. Thank, Thank you very much. It was very interesting to hear so a lot about the different colors. So I will ask uh, to our guests coming from uh, Great Britain, do you have also some traditions with eggs or other uh, traditions in uh, uh, linked to Eastern? Yes. Well, um i don't think so i'm uh, when i lived in switzerland i was amazed at the 
amount of traditions that there were over there. And I don't think we have them over here, certainly not in the church I go to. Um, so I don't think we do quite as much as, as you do in Europe, I must admit. And Stan, do you know some uh, traditions like this? Yeah. Sorry? I asked Stan if he oh. knows. <laughs> Thank you for your answer. I've just checked with I mean, my wife, and uh, we think that the tradition is much more modern and commercial. Uh, we all um, want to get chocolate. Um, and uh, children in particular look forward to the, the chocolate eggs. I, I don't think it's terribly religious, um, but it may have been in the past. Stan sagt, dass er glaubt, dass in England keine so religiösen Traditionen gibt, sondern dass die Leute vor allem deswegen Ostereier lieben, weil sie gerne Schokolade essen. Ja, bestimmt. Can you just translate in uh, Bulgarian? Emily? I was not here for a while, save that. Can you translate? Translate uh, what? That in. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, just a quick translation for the Bulgarian listeners. The Bulgarian listeners, 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 а другия господин спомена, че в Англия обичая много се е комерциализирал и всъщност вместо яйца ядат истински яйца, ядат шоколадови яйца. Всъщност до това се свежда техния велик ден. Благодаря, Зевта. И сега ще имаме една много хорошна песен. Това е пърсена от Лучия Елена Попа и е казан Мук Mokirita Kui Trifoi. And I ask Anna Slibo to explain about what she is singing. Trifoi is a plant, I think, but uh, what is uh, Mokirita? Mokirita. Uh, yes, uh, Mokirita Kui Trifoi. This is a well known uh, Romanian song which uh, is uh, about uh, love because a young lady is asked, is proposed to marry by two young uh, boys and she has to uh, choose one and uh, this, this is about choosing the one of uh, that uh, boys. Donna Lucia, what was that? I love some. So, thank you. And so, Lucia, please, let us listen. Mocirita cu trifoi mai, Mocirita cu trifoi, M-au cerut la mama doi mai, M-au cerut la mama doi. Ei, tu puiule de cuc mai, Ei, tu puiule de cuc, După care să mă duc mai, După care să mă duc. Ei, tu, mândruleana me mai, Ei, tu, mândruleana me, Du-te după care vre mai, Du-te după care vre. După cel frumos m-aș duce, După cel frumos m-aș duce, Că are guriță dulce, 
care gulița dulce, după cel frumos aș bere, care gura de miere. Thank you! Bravo! 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 Thank you very much, Lucia. And now we will continue to make our round um, the travel around the world concerning Easter tradition. Okay. And Emily preferred some PowerPoint and will explain how she discovered how, how Easter is celebrated in different countries. I would like uh, to tell to all people that uh, this yeah, especially pictures, it's not necessary for translation. Can you please say in Germany, I will say this in <laughs> oh, your sound is not good. <laughs> Предимно картини, така че гледайте. So fascinating fun facts. You know that East and Bunny was created in Germany, but now the term Easter egg has uh, become uh, as phrases for discovering an intentionally hidden clue or joke in a film or video game. Pretzel are also Eastern snack. These are eggs from uh, one museum of egg. This is in North Romania. I was there and these are my pictures. These eggs are very beautiful. You see in Germany, or uh, one prepare in Germany, also in Austria, Norway. The decoration tree, it exists uh, in Germany, Austria and Finland. The, the act of painting eggs originates from a Ukrainian tradition. Uh, Ukraine uh, did uh, and now do it uh, for health and fertility. They traditionally do it with wax and dyes. In Romania, put a red egg and silver coin in the water and wash their faces for health and beauty. And also the eggs are very beautiful. Can you see? Yes. So these are pictures of museum. In Hungary, young boys and men sp sprinkle perfume or toilet water to the young girls and women dress in national customs and demand a kiss. This call is to evoke health, fertility, happiness, and beauty. The same ritual, ah, just these are very beautiful eggs of uh, Hungarian masters. Also, you can see Belgium egg. The same ritual, almost the same ritual exists in uh, Czech Republic and Slovakia. The young boys and men seemingly beat with rods decorated with ribbons, the young girls and women, for the same purpose, for beauty, happiness, health. In France, they don't uh, have uh, Easter bunny. The eggs are bring by fly bells. These are eggs from, from France, also from Belgium, uh, from uh, China, Peru, Russia, Italy.
In Serbia, the symbol of ISTA is a little chick. In Italy, they observe ISTA Monday with a picnic. In uh, of Lombardia, the symbol is uh, a dove shaped ISTA bread. In other regions, there are different symbols. In Bulgaria, this is my husband, my grand, uh, my father-in-law, and also my nephew. Usually, several generations get together to celebrate Easter, Vilik Den, which is a great day in Bulgaria. They have fun, eat a roast lamb, kozunak, and also fight with colorful eggs. This uh, ritual is to bring hope, health, love, prosperity, happiness. This uh, uh, ritual exists in Greece only with red eggs. In Romania, the guest must fight the host egg. Uh, in the Netherlands, uh, two teams has to beat, has to fight uh, each other, but uh, only the same color from the opposite uh, team. It exists in Russia, Macedonia. In USA, Louisiana, this is uh, official competition from 1956. Also in India, it's a game. The one important uh, rule is that wives and girlfriends always have to be winner. Winners. These beautiful, maybe delicious things were prepared by Christina Marinova, our participants now. And these were prepared by me, by mother-in-law and my daughter-in-law. These are Bulgarian eggs. Also, we use special sweet bread, Kozunak. The name is coming from Romanian word Cause nuts, but uh, in Romania it is uh, came from Greek word kozunaki. Maybe you are hungry. In United Kingdom, they don't have special traditions, as uh, the person said. But I have to remark that in 2007, uh, one of the very famous. Uh, egg of uh, Carol, uh, which was made by Carol Faberge in St. Petersburg, was sold for 9 million pounds. I show two, two eggs here. They are different. The second X, which is small here, small picture, this is of um, uh, Katerina, Katerina Velika, the queen of uh, Russia. Uh, in Poland, they go in the church for blessing the eggs. In Europe, people, families decorated the rooms, the tables, the houses with flowers, with uh, colorful eggs. They usually use um, daisy, tulip, azalea. And this is funny eggs. The oldest X is up, the oldest X fine in the world, and down uh, fine X. And beautiful X. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Emily, for the tour around Europe. And we see that uh, we have very, very similar. Did I stop my monitor? Yes. Okay, thank you. Most of a lot of, lot of comments concerning the expedition and that we have different kinds of doing. As Tanya did it, and so it's uh, with the family, but also in a very, uh, how to say, elaborated way in porcelain and so on. And so thank you, Emily, to, for your presentation with X from all kinds of existing forms and also for breads. And I'm sure if we 
go deeper, we will see that we have a lot in common. I will show you that we have also in the Kodanek side now some of the um, some contributions about Easter from some of you and we hope to get more and uh, Leonard will show it oh. this is in the Ulm and it's a, a very nice decorated uh, Brunnen uh, who can help me in, in well, mountain, yes. Well, how? Well. Well, well, fountain, yes. And can you mal bitte aufmachen? And it's a citizen engagement ah. for Eastern to decorate this fountain in the Easter tradition. And you will see that we have in go a little bit down, please. Um, in English and in German, the explanation, mm. the description, and the intention why the person thinks that it's very important to know this custom as cultural treasure. And uh, we hoped also to have translation in other languages, in Romanian, in Bulgarian, and so on. And we have another one, it's Palmbuschen. Uh, Leonard, can you make it known? This on the right, the Easter palm, it's Bea who is with us, who describes why she thinks that is, this is a very, very nice tradition. You see it with a lot of children. Give me some runter, bitte. Here in the church, the decoration one week before Easter, the kids prepare by themselves this palm bush. And uh, Bea, why they do it? Oh, she doesn't hear me. Uh, um, Bea, huh? can you repeat yourself? We didn't hear you till now. Yes. Yes, you did. Explain uh, why you presented this as yes. cultural treasure. Um, it's a religion background, and of course, the uh, Jesus when he come to Jerusalem um, in Sunday before um, this uh, uh, light began, and all the people are uh, say hello to him with all the palms in in their hands, and they are uh, crowding and hello, hello, and uh, so we try uh, to have a sense of it each year one week before easter on palm sonntag palm sunday and um in uh, in the the, the part of country in south um this palm bush behave all the the, the persons the house the animal for um for miss and for uh, something bad and um, they protect it all. That's uh, the, the background. So and these little um, bushes uh, you can buy and there will be plasma in the church and then you can take it at home and stay it to the uh, um, uh, kreuz, um, uh, cross, to, cross no, to the kreuz, cross or uh, something in, in, uh, in the uh, room and it, it has to protect you. And it's a nice remember of the time and uh, you can stay, say it be, belong to, to Easter when the really start is new from all the religion life. So thank you very much, Bea. And you see, as a uh, one once more, the fountain we have seen in Söflingen, in uh, Wangen im Allgäu, where I live, there are different uh, fountains and they are decorated by schools. That different classes in the school decorate the fountains in the town 
and um, it's uh, named uh, the name of the school is uh, there uh, written and then you can see which which school is decorated this fountain it's a really really nice uh, traditional treasure and um, gives us give us hope and um, zuversicht 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 what me zu, zuversicht Trust. vertrauen trust vertrauen trust, 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 yeah. mm -hmm. really nice mm -hmm. thank you bea very much thank you very much and so you see that you can find in the Kodanek site a, a lot of contributions with cultural treasures and not cultural treasures as material treasures but intangible treasures uh, which are very important for the person who presents and uh, we learn a lot about our customs and so you yeah, are really cordially invited to join and to send us also your cultural treasure not only about uh, easter but about all the year it can be a handcraft it can be a poem it can be uh, a song it can be a value uh, whatever you like and so we will um, have more and more uh, collection of uh, our cultural treasures and i think it will be very fine to see when we have more than 100 and we can compare so this was Eastern, but now we have another um, very nice presentation. It's coming by Horst. As Horst said, he's also um, a leading person of a dance group in Biberach. And because he was so excited by the dances of the group, uh, the group of Cluj uh, uh, Nap Napuka, he sent us a dance he made with his group and he explained how they do and why they do it. Up to you, Horst. Well, I'd like to talk a little bit about our folk dance group, which uh, we started to dance with in 1988 already, when my wife and I got married. Here she is. <laughs> and uh, as I, when I saw the video, of the Romanian dance group. I was reminded of our wedding dance, which we danced uh, at the wedding party together with 200 uh, guests. And we presented a Romanian wedding dance. And this was exactly the first dance of the video, which was sent to us. The Dea Lungul, I think it, it was called. And so I was very excited to see it and to hear the music again, of course. And uh, since 1988, we have been dancing together. Some of, the, of our group are still there, who started in 1988 together with us. And uh, we practice dances really from all over the world, but mainly from the, the southeast of uh, Europe, but also Israel and uh, the Western European countries. And this might be interesting for the English participants today. We also dance English dances and American contra dances, for example, some line dances, but of course, uh, some Swabian dances as well. And uh, for today, I chose a dance uh, which symbolizes the leaving of his home of a son and the lyrics tell us uh, the discussion between him and his mother who wants to persuade him not to leave his home and as she is so obviously strong and she presses so much he at the end decides not to leave and in the dance it is shown by the steps that uh, he is very doubtful about his decision to leave his home. And uh, in the lyrics, he is the bird which will fly away. And the mother, she asks him, have you proper clothes with you? 
and uh, do you wear good boots and so on and so forth. And maybe we show a little bit of the video that you can have an idea of it. I think this is enough. This gives quite a good idea now. As you see, the dancers move forward and then they move uh, back another step. Then they go into the middle, which means probably a certain kind of pause. And uh, so you see that, especially in Israeli dances, dances uh, a story is told. And also the lyrics uh, show this. And that's why we like uh, to do Israeli dances. But mainly, as I said, we do Greek dances, Romanian, Bulgarian, Serbian, Croatian. And this is... Uh, what we mainly do. And uh, each participant of an evening, we meet on Friday evenings, uh, one and a half hours, uh, he or she will pay five euros and all this money goes to a project in Peru where children are fed in the morning and they are given a breakfast and in 2011, we were there to help there to distribute the, the food. And we were very impressed how poor these uh, families are and uh, that it's worth helping and uh, donating money to the organization because we know for sure that the money will reach these families. And they can go to school there. They uh, have built two schools from kindergarten to A-levels. And of course, they, these children have a big chance uh, to uh, be successful in their future life. We have a foster child in Paraguay where they also have uh, the same system with schooling and uh, educating the children in a very good way. So, and this, only for five euros an evening and all over the year. And so we can usually give them 1,000 euros at the end of the year. Well, that's it for now. If you are interested, you can look it up on the internet, kinderwerk-lima.de. And there you will get more information. Thank you. Thank you a lot, Horst. I think it was a very nice presentation right. of your uh, weekly work together. Yes. And we have yes. Yes. But okay. perhaps we can just give the time yeah. to uh, Anna yeah. to translate yeah. in Romanian yeah. abbreviation and then uh, to in Bulgarian because it's interesting to hear that you are dancing, that you have a lot of pleasure. 
but also said you are and did he have to wear any collected money for to children in Lima. Anna, yes, you yes, uh, uh, yes. Domnul Horst dansează, el împreună cu soția lui din 1988, execută dansuri din Israel, din Croația, din România, din mai multe țări foarte frumoase și de asemenea fiecare dans, fiecare melodie are un mesaj frumos, iar toate acestea sunt nu numai pentru... Sunt și cu un alt scop, respectiv în fiecare seară, pentru fiecare seară se adună 5 euro, iar toți acești bani vor fi uh, dat pentru ajutorarea unei școli din Peru, astfel încât la sfârșitul unui an se adună în jur de 1000 de euro care merg acolo pentru ajutorare. Thank you very much. And just uh, some words in Bulgarian. Da, da. Ok. So, за българските слушатели, човека разказа за това, че всеки петък групата, която видяхте, се събира вечерта, танцуват танци, основно от източна Европа. И всеки петък вечерта, всеки, който идва да участва в тази дейност, плаща 5 евро. Тези пари се събират и след това отиват за подпомагане на едно, една организация, която се грижи за деца в Перу. И с помощта на тези средства са построили детска градина и помагат на децата да учат до 16, до 16 годишна възраст. Това е нивото A-level, за което той говореше човека. Всяка година успява да изпратят по 1000 евро на тази организация и през забравих коя година, но са отишли, те самите са отишли до Перу, за да видят това на място и казва, че са били потресени от това колко са бедни хората там. Не, да. Но също така са били а, убедени, видели са на живо, че всъщност средствата, които те даряват, отиват по предназначение и че наистина подпомагат тези деца. И ако някой от вас се интересува повече за тази организация, за този техен проект, вебсайта е посочен в а, секцията. Го виждате, където са съобщенията. Ah, thank you, Sefta. It was a complete translation of his speech. Thank you very much. Now, uh, inspired by this dance, we come to Brigitte, and Brigitte has chosen for us a very nice poem, and she will present from whom it is, and uh, she will present it to you. Brigitte from Frankfurt. Uh, it's okay. Ah, no. Sound. Uh, Leona Stacey and, yeah, okay. Do you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hello. I'm Brigitte from uh, Frankfurt. I will present to you a poem by Annette troste hülshoff who was on the 20 Deutschmark um, uh, money uh, when in Germany we had the, the, the Deutschmark. Um, she was um, uh, born in uh, 1797 um, um, and died in 1848 and one of the most uh, impo uh, important German poets of this time. She was a baroness and, uh, and educated by several private tutors she learned several languages, mathematics, natural history, and music. She began to write as a child with her unusual combination of imaginative vision with close, accurate observation and depiction of reality. She stands at the point of transition between romanticism and realism and does not belong wholly to one of that uh, uh, part. She received early instruction in piano and later in singing. She was in contact with Clara and Robert Schumann. Uh, she was not very strong 
and in the, her last years she lived in Schloss Meersburg at the Bodensee, where she died with uh, 51 years. And um, <clears throat> I will read to you a um, poem which is called Spring is the Best Time. And I will read it to you first in English and then in German. Annette von Troste Hülshoff, Spring is the Best Time. Spring is the best time. What could be more beautiful? Far and wide it grows and blooms in the golden sunshine. The last snow melts on the mountainside. The brook rushes down to the valley. The seeds are green. The lake is glittering in the sunbeams of spring. Everywhere, meadow larks sing. The blackbird calls in the forest. Now comes the dear nightingale and the, the cuckoo soon. Now everything far and wide cheers, and we gladly join in. Spring is the best time. What could be more could be more beautiful. Now I read it to you in German. <coughs> Der Frühling ist die schönste Zeit. Der Frühling ist die schönste Zeit. Was kann wohl schöner sein? Da grünt und blüht es weit und breit im goldenen Sonnenschein. Am Berghang schmilzt der letzte Schnee, das Bächlein rauscht zu Tal. Es grünt die Saat, es blinkt der See im Frühlingssonnenstrahl. Die Lerchen singen überall, die Amsel schlägt im Wald. Nun kommt die liebe Nachtigall und auch der Kuckuck bald. Nun jauchzet alles weit und breit, da stimmen froh wir ein. Der Frühling ist die schönste Zeit. Was kann wohl schöner sein? Thank you for listening. Thank you, Brigitte. This was really a nice poem and a nice end of our session, remembering us that we have a lot of problems in all mm -hmm. our countries for the moment, and we are restricted in our homes to be in our homes. But we have also springtime, and who can have a look outside, or who has a garden, or who has the freedom to go out? Uh, you can see spring is wonderful and. Uh, we hear the birds and so on. And we hear it this year more than in the other years because the traffic is lower. And so we have a lot of advantages. Also, we have a lot of disadvantages by Corona. Uh, we come to the end for this time. Thank you for contributing so a lot. And let me say, it's so wonderful that uh, a lot of people are always ready to uh, give presentations, very personal presentations. And I ask you with all my heart to help us to find other ones and to encourage them because it's not about professionals to meet each other. It's for to get in touch with friends and to get new friends. And yeah. one of the ways we try for the moment. Thank you to all. Goodbye for this time. Bye. And uh, see you Bye. next Bye. week. And uh, we have some very interesting presentations uh, prepared for next week, but we need some others. Please give us some support. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. bye.